Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled family has their vacation ruined. Our next Reddit post is from C. Bradbury. I recently traveled to a beach town to visit relatives. I'm there so often that quite a few people think that I'm a local. Both locals and tourists are pretty good at respecting your personal space, so when you go to the beach, they won't sit too close to you. In my over 20 years of making multiple visits per year to the beach, I've never had a problem with tourists until my most recent visit. I get to the beach early, like at 8.30am, and I set up my chair and umbrella. There are maybe five other families already set up for the day, so there's no one within a 100 foot radius of me. For the next hour and a half, I'm blissfully enjoying an audiobook and a handful of other people show up. The entire beach is still empty. All of a sudden I feel a tap on my shoulder. I thought that it was my relatives deciding to join me. Nope. It was an incredibly obese, trashy looking woman in her late 30s or early 40s standing over me. Behind her was about 12 other people who appeared to have packed up their entire house and were lugging it through the sand. Excuse me, but you're in our spot. What spot? This is our spot. My family is staying at the hotel right over there and we've been sitting in the spot for the last four days. You need to move. No I don't, I was here first. I said this is our spot. This whole stretch of beach is reserved for hotel guests only. Me, knowing that not a single hotel reserves areas of the beach for guests, say, Okay, well, go get someone from the hotel to move me. If you can find someone, I'll gladly move. Well, there's no one working right now. You're just going to have to believe me. There's literally miles of open beach. Pick a spot and enjoy your vacation. The entitled parent, both yelling at me and her family, says, This lady has just ruined our vacation. We need to find a different spot. So she and the rest of her family plop their stuff down literally 10 feet to the left of me, despite the entire beach still being open. For the next hour, I pretend to be asleep listening to my audiobook, but instead I'm listening to Entitled Parent. Every word out of her mouth is how much of a B-word I am. How it was so inconvenient that she had to carry her stuff an extra 10 feet. I was overjoyed when the lifeguard kicked her and the rest of her equally trashy adults in her group off the beach for refusing to put out their cigarettes. Our next Reddit post is from EcoOn. For some context, I sold a new gaming computer to this entitled kid a few weeks ago. It was custom built based on what he wanted to use it for. Three weeks prior to this, his entitled mom came into the shop complaining that the computer was useless and broken because it wouldn't play a specific game. The game was Ghost Recon Online, and this was during the early period of their release when it was riddled with bugs, but I managed to fix them. This brings me to today, three weeks after the initial fix. Our shop has fluctuating foot traffic. Some days we have no customers, and some days we have way too many. It was the start of a new month, so everyone had just gotten their salaries. This means that our shop was very busy. We barely had enough employees to deal with the customers. I was busy talking to a customer at the tech desk with a laptop that had a lot of issues. From email not working to USB ports not working, or even blue screens of death. In walks Entitled Mom, without the Entitled Kid or the PC. I thought that the Entitled Mom may have just been shopping around for new games or a keyboard or something. Entitled Mom walks right up to the desk and I say, Hi Entitled Mom, I'll be with you in a minute. Entitled Mom stood there, arms crossed, tapping her foot, as if I was inconveniencing her by talking to a customer. About five minutes later I booked in the guy's laptop, printed the necessary work orders, and Entitled Mother looked at me with this FINALLY look. The Entitled Mother then proceeded to ask me, Um, I've been waiting here forever. Are you gonna come pick up the computer from my car or not? I just looked at her with a confused face. The entitled mother then told me that she called the shop, my work colleague answered, and she said that she was on her way to drop off the entitled kid's computer AGAIN. She had apparently been parked outside of our shop in the disabled parking spot for 15 minutes. We were so busy that my colleague afterwards had to apologize because we didn't have the time to look outside for a car to pick up a computer and she got too busy to inform me that entitled mother was on her way. So I went outside to fetch the PC. The entitled mother, annoyed, asked again why the game doesn't work. After a few minutes of her trying to explain what her son told her, I said that I can try to figure it out and have a look. She then asked what the labor cost would be. Knowing how stingy she is, I told her no more than $20. She seemed fine with this, but I told her that that was IF the game was at fault this time. After printing out papers she left, and this is where the fun begins. We couldn't access the account for some reason. I just remember having difficulty opening Steam. At this point, I just figured the kid forgot his Steam password so I tried to reset his Steam password for him. 
After an hour or so of no results, I wrote an email to Steam support asking for help with the account. The next day, Steam wrote back with, This Steam account has violated the terms of service and is therefore banned. It was a lengthy email detailing why the account got banned and that it can't be retrieved. I was shocked by this email. The entitled kid had tried to add cracked Steam games to the Steam library. There were no actual purchase games in his library, and I saw icons on his desktop of games that were worth well over $20. And he also purchased aim hacking software for Ghost Recon Online. Knowing now why the game wasn't working, I called Entitled Mother to ask her and her Entitled Kid to come to the shop so I can explain to her why the game wasn't working. This didn't seem like something I could say over the phone. I don't know exactly why a Steam account itself was banned. Usually a back ban only affects the game that you cheated in. But I think he may have even tried to crack Steam to get games for free. I don't have a lot of experience with Steam bans, so forgive me for being a bit hazy on the details. This was around 5 years ago after all. A while later, they both entered the store. I had printed out the response that I got from Steam. I told the mom that her entitled kid had been using illegal software that he had bought with her credit card without permission, and that Steam had banned his account. I handed her the printed out email so she could confirm that I wasn't lying or making up excuses. The look on entitled kid's face was priceless. At this point, he knew that he had royally screwed up. He screwed the pooch. His face went white. Entitled Mother turned to look at him and asked what this was all about, and he just nodded and said, Sorry. She was livid, and asked how he could just use her card without her permission. How he could buy illegal software. How could he lie to her face about all of this? At this point, Entitled Kid was bawling his eyes out. This is where I started getting some respect for Entitled Mother. She hadn't even complained about the labor price. So she asked us to keep the PC in the shop for a whole week so Entitled Kid could learn his lesson and so that I could clear it of all the illegal software. She was even fine with paying for all the extra labor hours. Unfortunately, in the next story, Entitled Mother went back to being her entitled sucky self again, refusing to pay $35 for two days of labor for her two tablets and her home computer. Our next Reddit post is from Knight. When my ex and I got together, she had a very small business. I offered to help her expand her business, an offer that she jumped on, of course, since I could see that it was a good opportunity for our new family and I'm good at that type of thing. The more that I worked and grew her company, the less she worked, and the more she spent on travel, restaurants, gifts, nanny housekeeper, etc. It was pathetic, staying in bed until noon, up late on social media, drama, drama, drama. The nanny took care of the house and kids. The business was bringing in $75,000 per month. She was only making about 10 k per month before I started helping out. She is now only averaging about 3 days of work a month. Obviously, I addressed the situation with her multiple times, and then she called me abusive. And in hindsight, she was actually very abusive to me, verbally, psychologically, and physically. But according to her, I'm a real man so I can take it, and she's not like this all the time, blah blah blah. She cut me out of the now very successful business and took it over. She claims a monkey could do what I did. Soon after this, she files police reports, falsely accusing me of abusing her older daughter. Police and Child Protective Services are involved because of the very serious nature of these allegations, so I have to move out. It takes a year before I can see our younger daughter again. The court, police, and Child Protective Services are satisfied that the allegations are false. I am allowed access to my daughter. Another false allegation is made, and another, and another, and another. The police investigations ensue. All false. I had opened up my home and entire life to them. I'd done nothing wrong. I had nothing to hide. The cops were allowed access to anything they wanted, any time they wanted. Unannounced was fine too. I drove the investigation forward. So they start looking at her now for emotional abuse of the kids. I think what helped me a lot was when they asked me to take a lie detector test, and I agreed on the condition that she had to do one as well. She refused, and they never asked again. Suddenly, she wants to talk about getting back together. I've been hearing that her business has suffered horribly since she took over, and she's been blacklisted from many customers. And she wanted to know if I'd like to work for her. My reply was not what she wanted to hear. F*** you. Allegations continue, all false, and Child Protective Services realizes it. So Child Protective Services seizes the kids from her. 
Now my daughter is with me full time and her mother can't see her without CPS supervision. Court imposed psych assessments reveals that she has a nasty psychological disorder and must get years of treatment. Oh well, too bad, so sad. I'm one of the few guys out there that gets awarded child support. But she's on welfare now in an effort to avoid paying child support. Obviously that's in the best interest of the child, but it's quite the difference in lifestyle I suspect. OP, you raised this woman's daughters and then made her a millionaire and she rewards you with these awful accusations? And then, in the middle of it, she tries to invite you to work for her? I mean, how stupid could you be? Wouldn't the judge be like, Ma'am, if you thought this guy was abusing your daughter, why would you want him to work for you? Our next Reddit post is from Deleted. Okay, a bit to start with. I'm a freelance hiking and snowmobile guide on the island of Svalbard in the Norwegian Arctic, and I've had to deal with all sorts of people on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not super sure if this guy qualifies as an entitled dad since his son must have been at least 40, but here we go. A few months ago I was guiding a trip by myself. We only send one guide out when the group is small, so I went to the hotel to pick up my guests. It was an Italian couple and a Saudi Arabian father and his son. I walked into the hotel, introduced myself, and got everyone to go to my car. The entitled dad opened the passenger seat door, sat down, and looked at me confused. Oh, sorry, this is your seat, right? Nah, you can sit there if you want. It's easier for me to drive from the driver's side anyway. I always try to crack a joke or two to break the ice. Lots of people are nervous when having to drive a snowmobile the first time. He looked at me slightly more confused, but I assumed that it was a language barrier thing. I brought them back to headquarters and gave them a full safety briefing and overview on a map of where we'd be going. After that, I got them dressed and told them to wait outside because our suits are made to keep you warm at negative 30 degrees Celsius. So if you're inside a building, you quickly start to melt. Once I was dressed, I went to meet them outside. Oh, you're coming with us on the tour? I hope so, since I'm your tour guide. Earlier during the briefing, I'd done my usual. Hey, my name is Kat and I'll be your guide for the day. Is that a gun? Yes, sir, but don't worry, she's not yet loaded. The entitled dad and son looked at each other confused, and we all started walking towards the snowmobile so I could give them a small briefing on how to drive them. The Italian couple had told me that they had driven snowmobiles before, so I decided to place them in the back of the group with entitled dad and the son in the front. For clarity, each person got to drive their own vehicle. I did this because based on my experience, it's always better for the more experienced guests to be in the back, since they may have to speed up here and there to fill in the gap. But where's the guide? Here, right in front of you, standing at 1.7 meters. I'm hard to miss. But you're female. Guides can't be female. Huh? About 50% of our guides are girls here at Svalbard. It's not that uncommon. Don't worry, we girls are just as good as our male colleagues. The entitled father's 40-year-old son said, I think my father wants to know who will operate the gun. Well, let's hope that we don't have to take it out of the holster, but if we do, I'm trained and licensed to shoot. No. No? You're a woman. Women can't shoot guns. It's not safe. Excuse me? Guys, if you don't want me as your guide, that's fine with me. Go back into headquarters, take the suit off, and tell the receptionist to call you a taxi. If you don't feel safe, that's up to you, but I'm the guide for this trip today, and if you want to head out, you'll have to deal with me. But if we don't go, we want our money back. You can try, but I bet you that you won't get a penny back because it's your own decision to not come along. I'll go, but only if you get a male guide for us. I'm not getting anybody else to join. You sign the agreement that I'm in charge of this tour, and you'll listen to what I tell you to do and not to do. I didn't sign anything. Yes, about 15 minutes ago before you got dressed, I saw you sign it. The entitled dad then walks off back into the headquarters. His son and the Italian stayed. The son called his dad and found out that his dad wouldn't come out with a woman. So the son and the Italians drove with me. We saw reindeer, sea ice, and a polar bear in the distance. No need to pull out my rifle. And in general, we had a great time. After the tour, the son came to me to apologize for his dad's behavior and called me a good girl guide. My boss heard that and still mocks me with it today. Now, in all fairness, I don't think this is entitled parent behavior so much as it is like cultural sexism because I just looked it up and apparently women weren't able to join the Saudi Arabian military until 2019. But even then, what's the point of wasting a trip and all the money you spent on it just because you're too sexist to enjoy a snowmobile ride behind a girl? That's just stupid. 
That was r slash entitled parents. And if you like this content, then check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.